Want to know more about modified cameras, specifically Astro modified and full spectrum modified cameras? Good, you'll want to stick around for this one. We'll explore what these camera modifications mean, how the electromagnetic spectrum plays a role, and what kind of filters you can use to get different results. But before we dive into the camera modifications, let's take a little step back and take a look at the electromagnetic spectrum and how it pertains to photography. If you already know this stuff, then skip to the next section, but it's important to understand to make sense of this video. So, what is light? Light is a form of electromagnetic radiation, and it behaves as both a particle and a wave. But for the purposes of this video, let's just skip all that quantum mechanics nonsense and, and focus on it just being a wave. What we perceive as different colors are actually different wavelengths of electromagnetic energy, and a wavelength is the distance between two peaks of a wave measured in nanometers. Shorter wavelengths, which sit on the violet side of the spectrum, have more energy and measure around 400 nanometers, while longer wavelengths like red measure around 700 nanometers. All the wavelengths between these two values is more commonly known as the visible spectrum. Beyond this invisible spectrum and what our eyes can perceive, we have ultraviolet light, X and gamma rays, with even shorter wavelengths than 400. And beyond the other end, we have infrared light with longer wavelengths and lower energy. While we can't see ultraviolet and infrared light with our eyes, modified cameras allow us to capture and visualize these hidden forms of light. Now, why would we want to modify a camera? Well, sometimes we want to capture light outside this visible spectrum, like in astrophotography, infrared photography, or ultraviolet photography. Off-the-shelf cameras have a filter in front of the sensor, which blocks out these unwanted wavelengths. Thus, the data captured by a normal camera will be what the same as our eyes can perceive, but with modifications, we can unlock the full potential of the sensor. For example, many astronomical objects in the night sky emit in the hydrogen alpha range, which, I don't know why I did that, sits around 656 nanometers, which is kind of just beyond the visible part of the spectrum. Unfortunately, I don't have any cool graphics for this section, and I've reverted to what I do best, which is spreadsheets and making graphs. So across the bottom on the x-axis is the wavelength in nanometers, and on the y-axis is the percentage of light transmission, as I'm going to be talking about filters. So first, let's look at which wavelengths of light can reach the center of an A7 III. I'll pop the data source in the description. As you can see, a standard camera's filter blocks invisible light, but also has a marked drop-off in sensitivity to the red part of the visible spectrum. This is why it's harder to capture the deep reds in nebulae with a standard camera. But by modifying the camera, we can replace that filter, allowing the sensor to capture more of this light. So this brings us onto astro-modified cameras. An astro-modified camera is a camera where the internal filter blocking infrared light, which is also called the IR cut filter, has been replaced with one that allows more of that red part of the spectrum to pass through it. This allows the camera to capture deep sky objects more effectively, um, especially nebulae and other objects from the night sky, those red parts of the Milky Way that emit light in the hydrogen alpha range. So here is my Sony A7S, which has been astro modified. The cut filter in front of the sensor has been removed and replaced with one made by Bader. Here's an example of the difference between the same nebula, which looks more vibrant and detailed when shot with an Astro modified camera compared to one that's been taken with a standard camera. That's because the modified camera captures those rich reds and other details that are usually filtered out by standard camera IR cut filters. If you're into astrophotography, this modification is great for bringing out the true colors and depth of deep sky objects. You'll also get better sensitivity to light, sometimes up to an extra stop, meaning you can capture more faint stars and details more easily. A question that I'm often asked is, can I still use an Astro modified camera normally? And the answer is yes. You'll have to shoot in RAW and use a custom white balance to counteract the extra light being recorded in the red end of the spectrum. 
but no extra filters are necessary to achieve what you like normal photos. You can use an IR cut filter to sort of get your camera back to factory default, but it's not totally necessary. Uh, but without an IR cut filter, the white balance will be not what you're used to when editing in post. It'll be a lot lower, but that's just something you can learn to live with. Next up, we have full spectrum modified cameras. With these, the internal filter that blocks both the UV and IR light, the IR cut filter, is completely removed, making the camera sensitive to a much wider range of uh, wavelengths, so from ultraviolet all the way to infrared and everything in between. A full spectrum camera gives you the most flexibility when it comes to shooting in different wavelengths, which is why I sent this trusty old A7 IV over the pond to the US of A to get modified. Full spectrum cameras are great for infrared photography, for landscapes, what used to be green like trees and grass would then be pure white, and blue skies and inky black when shooting in black and white. But for ultraviolet photography as well, which can reveal details invisible to the human eye, like hidden details in flower petals. They have evolved patterns which are, let's say, invisible to us, but visible to bees and other insects, which is crazy. However, without filters, you'll just end up with a mix of UV and IR and visible light hitting the sensor, which is not what you want. So let me show you quickly what I mean. I'll turn the camera on, and as you can see, it's just a red tinted mess. So to control what part of the spectrum you can capture, you need to use filters. So let's jump back into my trusty spreadsheet to help me explain what's going on. Here's the sensitivity curves of standard and astro modified cameras. Now let's overlay a full spectrum, and as you can see, you're just getting a boatload of everything. This is where specialized filters come into play. Let's start with astrophotography broad spectrum filters. Much like the filter used in a standard astro modification, I can use a broad spectrum filter which would cut UV light and IR light above 700 nanometers, leaving me with the same sensitivity as an astro modded camera. In that same vein, I can also use a broad spectrum filter to mimic the original response of the camera filter reverting the full spectrum modification completely. So to answer the question, can I still use my full spectrum camera as a normal camera? The answer is yes, but with a filter. Whilst those filters let through a broad spectrum of wavelengths, narrowband filters don't. They only let light through in specific wavelengths. There are three wavelengths of light emitted by deep sky objects, which are most commonly captured by astrophotographers. Let's look at the graphs again to help visualize. The hydrogen alpha or H alpha filter, which isolates the 656 nanometer wavelength and is great for capturing the red emissions from nebulae. Then you have the O3 oxygen-3 filters, which isolate the 500 nanometer wavelength, showing blue-green details from supernova remnants and planetary nebulae. And last but not least is the sulfur-2 filters, or S2 filters, for capturing the deep red sulfur emissions in certain nebulae. The great thing about narrowband is that you're capturing specific wavelengths, cutting out the rest, which means you can still get great images and great data sets in areas with lots of light pollution or even under a lot of light pollution from a full moon, for example. Deep Sky Astro is a whole other rabbit hole slash money pit, which I'm not gonna go into many details today, but essentially you can take a H-alpha, O3 and S2 sort of images and data and combine them to create false color images. The results can be stunning, revealing lovely details within nebulae and the structures within galaxies, and you can also combine these with color data from a standard DSLR to create what's called a Hubble palette image, a method used by NASA's Hubble Space Telescope, hence the name. And they use narrowband filters and then assign the data captured by those filters to each of the channels in RGB, so the red, green, and blue channels, to create a color image. For infrared photography, you'll want an IR pass filter, which blocks out visible and UV light, only allowing infrared light to pass through to the sensor, a little like this one I bought from Case. These filters come in different cutoffs, like 720, 850 nanometers, depending on 
how much of the infrared spectrum you want to capture. I found a great resource from Kalari Vision, a filter manufacturer. I'll put a link in the description so you can check it out yourself. But this table shows you the different wavelengths and the different types of images you can get. Most IR filters start at the wavelength specified in the name. For example, the 550 nanometer filter will capture wavelengths of 550 and longer, like this one. If you remember from the visible light spectrum, this includes some of that. So if you want pure infrared, you'll have to get a 720 nanometer filter, which cuts out the whole visible spectrum. And I mainly want to do high contrast black and white photography, so I'll probably be looking at using the 720, but I'll explain more in another video. Let me know in the comments, actually, what you'd be most interested in me exploring with the full spectrum camera. Talking of infrared light, actually, I want to show you one more thing, and that is from the LiDAR sensor on an iPhone. This is quite interesting. So how does the iPhone look at you and determine your face? Well, it isn't through visible light, it's through infrared light. And if I activate my phone and put it in front of the camera, you can't see anything. But if I record on this one and then activate the phone, you can see all of these flashing lights. And this is the LiDAR sensor searching for my face, trying to scan for it to see that my face is actually my face. And lastly, for ultraviolet photography, you'll need a UV pass filter, which blocks out visible and infrared light, letting only UV light through. UV photography is used in scientific work, apparently. I don't know what, but as well as some creative portraiture to highlight details that absorb a lot of UV, like freckles, or to show the hidden details in flower petals that have evolved specifically to attract bees, like I've already said. And there you have it. Astro modified and full spectrum cameras may open up a whole new world of possibilities for photography in light that you can't see. Um, and whether you're expecting to capture like the cosmos or it's just exploring the infrared world or ultraviolet details that you can't see, uh, paired with the right filters, um, you can really expand your creative tool set. Now you might be asking what is best for you and that depends on a lot of factors, but in summary, Astro Modified, if you're doing landscape astro and daytime photography and don't want to buy any more filters, this is probably the camera for you or the modification for you. Full Spectrum has the most versatility on the other hand um, to do all of the aforementioned types of photography, but be prepared to A, sink a lot of cash into filters, maybe telescopes, star trackers and imaging all night and B, learning about post-processing of deep sky photography, which is a whole other kettle of fish. I'll be making some follow-up videos using these cameras, trying out different filters, see what effects I can get. Um, and if you want to follow this creative journey, then don't forget to subscribe. I hope you found this video useful. If you like this video, then like it. If you disliked it, then dislike it. And I'll catch you guys in the comments section or in the next video. In the meantime, happy snapping.